Hello and welcome to 10forums.com. In this video, I'm going to go through some of the processes of creating and using a Windows 10 recovery drive. Windows 10 allows you to create a recovery drive on a removable USB drive. This can be used to recover in some scenarios when the operating system won't start. In these cases, you can use the recovery drive to boot into advanced startup options, which will allow you to do some troubleshooting. You can also uh, include system files on your recovery drive. If you select this option, then the recovery drive can reinstall Windows for you, even on a completely blank disk. Um, another advantage of the recovery drive is that it includes the drivers for the device that we use to create it. When I'm recording this video, um, which is using the Windows 10 release from July 2015, some of the functions in the recovery drive creation were unreliable and they might not work for you. As such, I wouldn't rely on them as my sole backup route. I would recommend having an alternative backup route, such as, for instance, using third-party software to create a backup image of your machine. Another issue is you might find that the recovery drive creation process just doesn't work on some machines. In this video, I'm going to show the process of creating a recovery drive without system files, and then also showing the creation of the recovery drive with system files. After that, I'm going to test the, the recovery drive we created by using the advanced startup options. And then finally, I'm going to show you what happens if you try and restore Windows or reinstall Windows from the recovery drive. You will need a computer or virtual machine to run this on. Uh, before attempting a reset or recovery, please make sure you have a good backup of the machine before you start, because if you do the recovery process, your existing setup, files, documents and anything else will be overwritten. You will also need a spare removable USB drive. Everything on that uh, drive will be overwritten and for the option to create the system files, the USB drive will need to be about 4 to 8 gigabytes. This varies from computer to computer. If you don't use that option, it probably needs to be about a gigabyte. To create the recovery drive, you can either type recovery drive into the search box and select the option it brings up or you can go to control panel and then select recovery and then create a recovery drive. Once that comes up you can choose whether to back up the system files. You then select the destination USB drive and the warning is that this drive will be completely wiped by this process and then you create the recovery drive. One option which you might want to consider before creating the recovery drive you can capture your software that's installed on the computer into something called a provisioning package. This will then be included in the recovery drive when you create it. Uh, that means that if you need to reinstall Windows from the recovery drive, it will also restore the software that you captured. Um, on YouTube, I'm going to put a link to another video uh, called Introduction to Using Scan State with Provisioning Packages, which will show you how to do this. I'm now going to demonstrate the process of creating the recovery drive without system files. So first I'm going to type recovery drive into the search box. Then when the option comes back, I'm going to click on it. Click yes on the user account control dialog box and then you'll see the recovery drive window comes up. Now I'm going to cancel it and show you how to get there from control panel. So I'm going to right click on the start button, then select control panel, then within that select recovery, and then the option to create a recovery drive. And that brings up the same dialog, the same dialog box as before, and then we have the recovery drive window. Now I'm going to unclick the option to backup system files at this stage. Then when I click next, it will do some calculation. I think at this point it's calculating the size that it needs to, to store the recovery drive. In this case we need 512 megabytes. I've got a drive plugged in. I've selected that. There's a warning that it's going to wipe everything on the drive. Uh, and then I click create.
the end of the process, there'll be a dialog box saying the recovery drive is ready. Um, at that point, you can click finish and remove the USB drive as you would normally. The second method is to create the recovery drive with the system files included. To create the recovery drive, you can use the same options as before. This time I'm only going to show you the control panel method. So I'm going to select control panel, then select recovery, and then the option to create a recovery drive. This time I'm going to leave the box ticked to backup system files to the recovery drive. I'm going to click next. At this point, it's trying to look at the size of the space it needs. This takes a long time, probably a few minutes, so I've speeded this part of the video up. Then it comes back. This time it needs four gigabytes to hold it, which is bigger than last time. Um, I've got my drive plugged in. Again, it'll be deleting everything on the drive. Um, and then I click Create. Now, with system files, the option to create the recovery drive takes a long time. Um, I think in this case it took me about an hour. So this is a virtual machine, which makes it quite slow. But even so, it's quite a, quite a long time to wait. Um, and again, I've speeded that up. So the first thing I'm now going to test out, having created, created our recovery drive, is what happens when you boot into the recovery drive we created without system files. Now to do this, you might need to change your BIOS settings to allow you to be able to boot from a drive. If the machine is working, then you can go into advanced startup options from within the operating system and select the option to use a device from there. When the recovery drive boots up, the first thing you need to do is to choose your keyboard layout. In this case, I'm going to choose United Kingdom. Um, because the operating system is working, I do have the option still to continue into Windows 10, or I can turn the machine off, or I can troubleshoot. Now, within the troubleshoot options, I can reset the machine, although again, that relies on having some files actually working on the disk, or I can go into Advanced Options. In Advanced Options, if we've got a restore point, we can do a system restore. If we've got a system image, we can do a, a system image file and do a recovery from that. Um, we could also do a startup repair. And there's also the option to go to command prompt if you want to do some troubleshooting there. The second test is to try uh, booting from a recovery drive which had the system files uh, added onto it. As before, you would need to boot into this, perhaps by changing your BIOS settings uh, to make sure it could boot from an external drive. As before, when it boots up, the first thing we need to do is to choose the keyboard layout. Now, in this case, I've actually deleted the operating system off the disk, so there isn't an option to continue to Windows 10. I can troubleshoot, and because I copied the system files, there's a new option to recover from a drive. If I select that, it will get things ready, and then it has the option to either clean the drive fully, if I was giving the machine to someone else, for instance, or just remove my files. In this case, I'm just going to remove my files. Do that it shows me what's going to happen it's going to delete everything from the machine and then it starts the process i've trimmed out quite a lot of this process because it's quite a slow process to reinstall windows because that's what it's doing um, once it's get to the end of recovering this pc step it will then start going through a normal windows installation process I'm not going to show you all these dialog boxes that go through when you have a normal Windows setup. For some reason it's changed my time zone to Pacific time. It doesn't normally do that. Um, and then once you go through all the normal dialog boxes, you get to an installation of Windows. As my third demonstration of how to use a recovery drive, I'm going to try reinstalling Windows on a blanked out machine using a recovery drive where I've selected the system files option, but also before I created it, I've previously made a provisioning package. Now, the video showing how to do that, but there'll be a link for that in the notes of this video. As before, the first thing we need to do is to choose the keyboard layout. Um, I'm going to select Troubleshoot. Then you see the option is there to recover from a drive. 
Once I've picked that, there is an option to choose whether I want to completely clean the disk or just remove the files because I'm going to keep the machine. And then it also shows you uh, a list of the things it's about to do as it creates a recovery drive. Then we click recover and it starts the process. As before, I've trimmed out quite a lot of this process uh, for the purpose of making this video a little bit quicker. So we've arrived at our Windows installation, but this time you'll notice that there are some applications that are installed. So I've got Adobe Media, Firefox and VLC Player, and I'm just going to click on Firefox to try and open that up to make sure it's actually there, which it is. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to create the recovery drive and also a couple of ways that you might use the recovery drive to recover from some problem situations with your computer. Do go to 10forums.com if you have other questions or for general support or just to learn more about Windows 10.